resonance. You speak something, it gets bounced against something and comes back. So one is the sound, another is echo, but it's the same thing, basically. So they say that things are always contrasting in this way. And person who gets caught in this contrast is the one who suffers. And that's who we all are, sansaris. We are all suffering because we are caught with that grip. Our mind is so strong, mind is so powerful that grips us into these concepts. I like this, I don't like this. I hate this, I do this, this and that and all that. All day long, it's not enough. Then in our dreams, the mind keeps on bothering you. Our desires are still alive. We see the dreams. Whatever we could not do in the daytime, we finish in the dream because we have all the freedom to do whatever we want to do. We want to drop that handle and have a million dollars dropping in the sleep. At least we can do that. So, the... There is only one good thing, and everything else is the evil. The only one good thing in the world is synchronizing yourself with consciousness. When you synchronize yourself with consciousness, everything else is immaterial. Because whatever you see outside is operated by the mind. Your connection with the world is only because of the mind. When matter minds, because when the mind matters, <laughs> matters mind. <laughs> when mind does, when matter does not mind, mind doesn't. Sorry, sorry it was very tricky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mind your matter. No, no, no. Uh, I'll come back to that later. <laughs> right. So when the matter minds means the material mind is very important. I mean, material world is very important. Mind matters. Mind matters. When mind doesn't matter. Matter does not matter. <laughs> so you go beyond the matter, the ultimately. But when your mind is focused on the matter, mind is continuously alive. When the matter, mind doesn't matter even, then the matter falls apart. So then you're in a spiritual zone. So the only good thing in the world, the only purest of the purest thing, we like to criticize people. We like to say something bad about other people. But it's only because we consider ourselves good. And are we good? Are we absolutely pure like Brahma or 100% synchronized with consciousness? We are not. And yet, we take the liberty. Just because that person doesn't happen to be here, we can say whatever. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so that's how we really criticize others. And of course, somebody else criticizes us. And that's how the world keeps on going. But it, all that is a waste. Until you synchronize yourself and you become Brahma, you become Paramatma, you become God, then you have a right to say something that compared to that, this thing is bad. For you. But you're not there yet. How can you say anything? Right? So synchronizing yourself with the God is the ultimate goal of life. Like somebody says, I want to do some I want to reach to the samadhi and I don't mind eating meat. I eat meat. Again, your concept may be different. You said, no, you should not eat meat. But how do you know? After all, say, well, Jesus Christ was Christian. He did eat meat. And uh, he drank wine. Mm -hmm. How do you know that eating meat is good for you or is it bad for you? Scripture says, your scripture says you should not. Other scripture says it doesn't matter. So how, what do you believe and what you don't believe? You make it your own truth. After eating meat, can you go to the samadhi? Can you reach to the thoughtless state? Nistarang man, where there are no waves, the calmest of the calmest ocean of consciousness is the samadhi. How difficult it is for you to reach to the samadhi. That's the ultimate truth. Whether you can synchronize, you can dance with <coughs> Paramatma. That music in your heart, is it flowing freely or not. If you think eating meat disturbs that, then it's not for you. If it doesn't, you can still reach to the samadhi and you think that eating meat helps you to go to the samadhi, connects you with the God, it helps you bring you peace in your life and heart and the mind, fine, then do it. But you decide. Don't let somebody else decide for you. But you should have sensitivity to observe all these things. After all, one life is wasted.
for your stomach. By disregarding another life, it hardens your soul. And reaching to the soul, reaching to the samadhi, is the most delicate state of your life. Most, most delicate state of your mind. To reach there, if you think you can harden your soul and still live with it, fine. It's, it's for you. But if it doesn't, you analyze yourself that can I live with that hard soul? With the hard soul, it will be very difficult to reach to the samadhi level. Ramakrishna Paramahams, not, uh, uh, yeah, Ramakrishna Paramahams, he was Bengali. He must have eaten fish. Mm -hmm. Ram was Kshatriya. He must have killed. Yeah, he must. Must have killed animals. Yeah, he was hunting. He yeah. was hunting. Oh, yeah. He was running deer. after the deer. Deer. Murugamarichi, the yeah. golden deer, mm -hmm. right? Golden. He was Kshatriya. Now, how do you believe in Ram and not believe in uh, killing animals? Again, these are concepts. So, you decide yourself. Now, Ram is Ram. He reached his own enlightenment, but that was his problem. It's like climbing on the mountain. Whether you want to climb free or you want to climb with a big boulder on your shoulder. If you have, if you think you can reach to the summit with that boulder, fine, go ahead. You may reach. Some people who have a tremendous spiritual force built up over the period of many lives. Even with eating meat, they will reach. But do you have that spiritual force? You ask yourself. Doesn't look it. For most of us, we are still caught up in the society, <coughs> hating each other, loving each other, attachment, disattachment, all these things. Doesn't look like we have that much spiritual force. So why add something? If you're lucky to be born in a in a society where vegetarianism is possible, you should do it. So one life is not wasted for you. Fine, you are in the remote parts of Tibet or in the deserts where you have no other choice. You have to eat, you have to eat to survive because preserving your body is the most important thing to do. But if you can do it, not at the cost of somebody's life, then you should be. But again, these are up to you to decide. So, when people want to eat meat, they always have excuses. Well, Jesus Christ ate meat, Muhammad ate meat, yeah. this and that. So, we have excuses. We always build up excuses. Don't make any excuses. Ask yourself. You are the ultimate truth. For that, you have to learn how to go within. So, Muhammad and Christ, those are just excuses. And at that point, in fact, what happens is the reverse. That you want to believe that they reached enlightenment because you want to follow that you they ate meat them. and that despite <laughs> that they could reach that so it's fine to eat meat now they reached enlightenment or not now all of a sudden you believe that they reached enlightenment because you are eating meat you know it's like the other time i said about the, in the party i had a guy he says oh after all Shivji was used to drink bang, you know, so what's wrong with us? You know, so, you know, so they reached enlightenment despite all these things. But that was their different spiritual background. If you don't have it, it's not for you. So when you eat meat, and if your anger, your hatred, your greed, all these things, you know, calm down by eating meat, fine, go ahead. But if it doesn't, the other way around, then it's not for you. So those are the experiments you want to do in your life. That soul searching is the only real thing. Going to the temples and bowing down and putting a nariyar and all these things has no value until insight is not stirring up. That inner transformation is the real deal. And for that, you have to set up a special sessions with God. And that's meditation. You have to meditate. Then only soul searching can happen. There is a, uh, I mean, there is a, another Gita called Astavakra Gita. Astavakra was a great saint that happened, you know, several centuries back. He was, his body was broken up into eight places. And uh, his Gita is, for some people, they say it's even better than Krishna's Gita. The guy was very, very en enlightened. Uh, his very rich, you know, uh, philosophical discussions in Astavakra Gita. 
but now you don't break your own body <laughs> to because we want to mimic you say well mahavir did this so we cannot do the fasting mahavir did this or muhammad did this so we want to mimic them because they were doing this but they were doing it after they had reached enlightenment and <laughs> not before so if we are putting the buggy before the horse so if you really want to copy them you don't break your body at eight places so that because they, they you can look like astavakra looking like someone mimicking someone mimicking great all these saints does not make you a saint saints are made from within the saints are created by consciousness not by your efforts nobody creates saints you cannot make a saint out of yourself you have to do the inner transformation and you are not doing at that time believe me it's happening from inside what you are doing is only unlearning what you have learned that's all all the fake things all the wrong concepts that you are holding on to so far you're just dropping them one by one and it were all doing whether you call karmas or whatever it doesn't matter so out of all all these things are dropped like darkness cannot say that i am the winner when the light comes up by itself and the darkness falls you cannot say the light was already there the light of spirituality the light of consciousness is always shining it never shuts off only we bring the clouds in front of it by our wrong concepts and wrong beliefs and wrong thoughts and and we keep on talking scriptures are just expression of individuals thoughts you know we should all bury them we should just throw them away because they're just misguiding you once you read gita and say oh this is the truth this is not this is but you don't have your own inside synchronization what is actually happening where you are you at the total peace are you at a total bliss that's your proof so so the thing is if you notice it whatever you deal with say if you do something good say to speak the truth because brahma is truth brahma creates every single situation that is created in his purest form is the ulti- ultimate truth every single second the creation is happening and in its purest form is the only thing that is the truth so you create the lies and you speak untruth what happens then all of a sudden you want you are contracting you are not bold enough to speak it out loud any act that you committing which is not synchronized with parmatma you contracting yourself that all the bad things are committed in the middle of nights when people are confused people are not ready to share with whatever else everybody else is going on truth is something you have no problem you can share with the whole world you are open truth makes you open evil makes you contracted because it's only your creation so you are contracting you walking away from everybody else and that makes you secluded that divides you the divisions happen but when the truth is there you are open you are not afraid you want you don't mind sharing with everybody else so acts which are committed where you want to be by yourself believe me they are taking you away from parmatma acts that you can do with the whole world without worrying about it is all again you're synchronizing with parmatma so you want to open up you want to expand you want to include everybody you want to meet people you want to experience your synchronicity with the parmatma with other people who have soul also and that's those kind of acts let you expand so that's the uh, force of spirituality but the scriptures bind you they give you this set of moralities set of ethics set of virtues and unvirtuous things and things like that uh muhammad they say there are 10 commandments how can the whole life fall into 10 commandments what would you do when you need the 11th commandment 
then you have nobody to turn to. <laughs> At that time, you have to make your own belief and you, can, you have to create your own uh, guides of principles and you act accordingly. So there was a story of a priest and he was 